Thanks so much all for joining us. I have a really special guest. She's been on the Strack House before and we're bringing her back. She has an amazing perspective. Sam Horowitz, she's an author, speaker, and former first responder for 9-11. This is her book, The Silent Fall. Sam, thanks so much for joining us. Oh, thanks for having me back. It's a pleasure. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, I really thought your perspective would be great in this. Um, I know that you you talked about how you did suffer um, from post-traumatic stress um, and disorder. We're taking the D off. We're taking that word off. Um, but post-traumatic stress after 9-11. Can you quickly kind of tell um, those of us who are just those who are just joining and maybe haven't heard your story a little bit about um, your experience there? Sure. Well, uh, as you said, I'm 9-11 first responder, and I was actually in Tower 1 when the American Airlines Flight 11 struck it and uh, got out of one, uh, grabbed a bunch of people. But my, what I witnessed and experienced uh, that entire day had its uh, lasting, left its lasting marks on me. That's where uh, I I'll say got my post-traumatic stress. I did not know what was happening to me until almost two years later when I received a uh, clinical diagnosis in 2003 after starting uh, therapy. And uh, yeah, that's went through an entire journey that never thought I'd be exposed to anything like that that would cause post-traumatic stress. Uh, but even the nature of, you know, just being in law enforcement, uh, as you know, our law enforcement officers are in the midst of careers uh, suffering this. Mine just happened to be, you know, one single event. Right, right. And I know that um, you kind of talked about battling uh, suicide and you told me a couple of instances. And again, that, that full story is in that previous episode. But I saw an article recently that said from the VA that the, uh, the calls into the suicide hotline number have shot up because of this quarantine situation. What are your thoughts on what's going on right now? Well, you know, you can look at this in, as it relates to post-traumatic stress specifically in two ways. Um, the symptoms that come with post-traumatic stress, like hypervigilance, um, uh, which is a, you know, major startle reflex, anxiety, depression, that suicide, I, I did attempt suicide, um, and lots of others. It, it has, the way it affects people can be different. For instance, uh, some people do not like to be in large crowds at all. And so now what we're finding with this, uh, call it self-quarantine or stay-at-home order, it's not as bad because it's in, in general, they don't like being out right. in public. So some people are doing well. Now on the flip side, and I'll use that anxiety and depression uh, symptomology, Mm -hmm. that this quarantine has caused kind of a detriment because they rely on some social uh, interaction, if you will, and being alone, uh, maybe not having even pets is, is causing some of the symptoms of not feeling safe or that depression to come back up. And like you said, the numbers to the call in line have increased so one of the things I want to bring to light to help people understand is that if you see people out and you, in your opinion, may consider it, you know, they're doing non-essential, they may be doing something that can save their life because mm -hmm. they need to not be inside 24-7. And I, I hope people can understand that this yeah. kind of thing is different for everybody with post-traumatic stress. I know I'll speak for me when this first started. Um, I had through my post-traumatic stress, one of the things that I experienced was a buzzing feeling, uh, the feeling of not being able to sit still. And it started again when we went into this kind of stay at home, um, while, while I say I respond well to chaos and, you know, anybody in law enforcement, anybody who has served, like we're made for these kind of emergency situations. But when right. you throw post-traumatic stress into the mix, it, it changes different things. 
And so for me, that buzzing came back and it, and I almost was feeding off of uh, an invisible energy, if you will. And so being out and about didn't make me feel good at all. I mm -hmm. uh, created a safe space for myself, which is my home. I'm around my dogs. I have the support system. So that is a different thing that, and that's just for me personally. So it, it yeah. really is affecting people differently. And, and I, 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 I don't want to come across by saying it's okay to be out. Mm -hmm. So I, I am, I absolutely am abiding hundred percent by the stay at home orders, everything, because, sure. you know, I protect people, they protect me. We all do our part. But just understand that if you see somebody in Home Depot that's buying a gallon of paint, that to you may not seem like an essential need. But for that person, that gallon of paint, they're painting, they're keeping themselves distracted instead of depressed. So it's, it sure. can actually be a lifesaver for them. Absolutely. And that's such a good perspective because I never really thought of it that way that you really truly have no idea what is going on in someone else's head, in someone else's situation. So it's good to keep those in mind. And if you're a family member or a friend and you know that someone might be suffering or someone might be having these thoughts or struggling, what's, what is the best way to reach out or help them? Well, first, the best way is to be a good listener. Um, somebody with post-traumatic stress we want to feel like we have an open invitation to discuss what is occurring with us. Mm -hmm. And sometimes our family members, they, they want to fix, which is awesome. I mean, who doesn't want to fix, right? Mm -hmm. But with, when you're dealing with a family member who has a, a diagnosis of post-traumatic stress, the, you jumping in to try and fix something sometimes doesn't allow the person to freely express uh, what is going on and bring emotion into it so that you get a very clear picture. Often uh, in general, in the humans, you know, we listen to respond mm -hmm. or react versus listening to listen, to right. be empathetic, to understand where that person is coming from. Uh, you know, in our uh, post-traumatic stress workshops that I do with the Badge of Honor, which we're not able to do right now because of what's going on, uh, we have an entire section related, you know, that goes into, as a family member, you know, how can you support someone with post-traumatic stress? Things to say, things not to say. And, and really understand that right now, your first responder uh, your family member, they're being thrown into an ever evolving situation. If they're still, you know, I would like to say is wearing the badge uh, mm -hmm. or working in our ERs and really allowing them the space to just come home and whether it's vent, uh, anger is a very common uh, thing with post-traumatic stress, very common emotion, or whether you need to be that shoulder for them. Right. Again, it all comes down to being a very patient, open, listen. You, you've got to listen because if they're giving you warning signs, that's when you might need to take an extra step. So it really is support yeah. and it goes both ways. I'm not saying the family member who's supporting somebody with post-traumatic stress has to be a doormat or, a, or right. only has to listen. You've got to support each other. Uh, both ways. And it's yeah. not always easy. No. And, and even if you don't have post-traumatic stress, I mean, it, it's not, it's not always easy, but uh, you know, and something else you were saying about, you know, if someone's coming home from doing something, whether it's their job or whatever it is, um, it's, it's good advice. Also, even if you're, if you have a loved one or a friend who's a first responder right now, I mean, right now, you know, calls are up, numbers are up. Um, I've even heard stories of more break-ins in certain parts of the country. I mean, it just, Right now, with everything going on, that support is so important. Is there any more, any other advice that you really want people to hear um, or take away from watching this? I want, if you're a first responder or family member first responder, I want you to know that now is the time to really 
take stock of your emotions, how you're feeling. It's okay not to be okay. And, but that you have to cultivate an, a, a kind of openness, if you will. It's, it's okay to ask for help. Again, we are, tr we are going through something that we haven't really gone before. Now, I, I, you know, I go back to SARS and H1N1 and when I was wearing the badge, I was out. I, it's not comparable really to what we're seeing now. And I think that's the advent of social media and people having so much access mm -hmm. that you really have to do your part to take care of yourself and understand that as a first responder, that is not a selfish thing, right? right. We're, we're asking everybody to take stock of how they're feeling, how this is affecting you. And if you need the extra support system to ask for it, it goes for family as well to support a first responder to support somebody who's been clinically diagnosed, you have to take care of yourself as well. And there is no shame. There is no stigma. We've got to bring those walls down and we've got to allow our first responders, our folks out there who are suffering with depression, thoughts of suicide, we've got to allow them that freedom to be able to pick up the phone and to do the things that they need to do to take care of themselves. Yeah. That's so powerful. And, and I know you've said this before, but uh, you, I remember in our last one, you said, it's okay to not be okay. It's just not okay to stay there. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And that, that, that's some great advice. And really, you can only take care of someone else if you can take care of yourself. You need to you know, make sure you're okay in order to help others. So uh, Sam, where can people find out more information if they want to reach out or they want to um, have you speak when kind of things open back up again, or they just want to learn more? Yeah, there's two places. You can get me through my website, my main site, samanthahorwitz.com. And I just launched uh, a free training um, for specifically designed for people to bring down their stress levels. You'll walk away from the training with specific tactics and, and tools that you can use on a daily basis. And if you're a first responder, family of first responders, you can also reach out through a badge of honor.com and see what uh, we're all about, how we can support. And of course I'm all over, you know, Twitter and Facebook at the Sam Horwitz. Awesome. Sam, thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate it. Well, thank you very much for having me. Absolutely. All right. Well, thanks everyone for watching. Stay tuned for more episodes. So happy to have Sam on. She's a great speaker. Uh, and like I said, if you do want to find out more about uh, her book or where to find her, we do have those notes in the captions and her story you can find on the Strack House on one of our previous episodes. All right. Tune back in later this week.